this whole thing has gotten very convoluted. And because we've come to believe that ApoB containing particles, specifically VLDL, LDL, chylomicrons, are the causative agents of atherosclerosis. I think this is completely wrong, and I will question that now. So if LDL is causing atherosclerosis, then it sort of makes sense that in humans, we should get it as low as possible in all humans. Uh, Dave Feldman's group has a really interesting imaging study going on right now. There's no data from that study, but we will have data in the next few years. What they are doing is looking at coronary imaging, uh, I believe by CT coronary angiography of patients with quote unquote elevated LDL. Most of these people are lean mass hyperresponders, so they have very elevated LDLs while remaining insulin sensitive with high HDL, low triglycerides. This is Dave Feldman's lipid triad, not the lipid triad uh, referenced in this 4S paper that I just mentioned in this podcast. But they're following them longitudinally to see if they will develop atherosclerosis. Most cardiac radiologists say they should because they have elevated LDL. We'll wait for the results of that trial. I think it's going to be very, very interesting. Mainstream Western medicine physicians believe that because LDL and other ApoB-containing particles are the causative agents of atherosclerosis, we should get this as low in as many people as possible. I've heard commentary um, from physicians saying they don't really have a problem with a carnivore or animal-based diet, but if someone on an animal-based diet has an elevated LDL, they should take a statin to lower that. This is essentially, I'm paraphrasing, but that is true to the spirit of what physicians will say about uh, this way of eating. But what if LDL is not causing atherosclerosis? What if something else is the first agent of atherosclerosis and LDL is getting wrapped into that process, perhaps even being brought there by the body to aid in repair of the vessel wall, which has been injured by something else? In that case, is it possible that in some situations, in people who are insulin resistant, the majority of the human population on the planet and in this country, that elevated LDL sometimes looks worse or sometimes associates with higher rates of cardiovascular disease. It's very possible that that is the actual situation that is going on, and we can see that. If you look at the Framingham study, much like this 4S study, but not involving statins, and you look at the relationship between LDL levels, low-density lipoprotein levels, and cardiovascular disease incidence, what you find is that if you do that as a whole group and you don't give any sort of third variable to stratify or to break those people out into levels of insulin resistance and insulin sensitivity, as LDL increases, cardiovascular disease increases. This is the type of data that many who believe LDL and ApoB containing particles are causative of atherosclerosis will point to, but they ignore the data that goes further into that analysis and breaks that same set of data from Framingham or other trials into subgroups by insulin sensitivity, whether you're using fasting insulin, whether you're using HDL to triglyceride ratio, whether you're using isolated HDL, what you find is if you break that Framingham data into four lines based on your HDL level, those who have the highest HDL above 65 milligrams per deciliter essentially show no relationship between levels of LDL and cardiovascular disease, while those with the lowest HDL show a very strong relationship, suggesting that there is a third variable at play, which I would say is clearly insulin resistance, AKA sensitivity. So here's the question that must be answered by anyone who claims that ApoB is causative of atherosclerosis. If that is the case, why do we not see atherosclerosis, that is the formation of atheromas and plaques in the veins of our body, unless they are grafted into the arterial circulation? But in a native human, we do not see atherosclerosis in veins. We only see atherosclerosis in arteries. Why is that? Because something else is required for the beginning of atheroma, and that is damage to the endothelium, damage to the inside of the arterial wall, damage to the inner layer of blood vessels. And in veins, veins are so much lower pressure, they do not have the damage from the higher pressure in the arterial system, which denudes, which scrapes off the endothelium in those arteries and leads to a lesion, which can become an atheromatous plaque or a fatty streak. This is the beginning of the process. Now, what causes the endothelium to get damaged? All of our arteries probably experience this, even in healthy individuals, at the bifurcations, at the sharp corners, where you turn the car real sharply, the tires screech. That creates turbulence. Even in healthy individuals, younger than myself or myself, I probably have some damage to my endothelial lining of my arteries 
at branch points, but the normal process of repair in my body, I believe, repairs those and they do not become atheromas. I believe that in diabetics and those who are insulin resistant, and we know that these individuals have impaired immunity, have impaired wound healing. That's why diabetics get amputations of their toes, their feet, or their legs. We know they get retinopathies. We know they get all of these sequela side effects, long-term side effects of diabetes because they have impaired immunity and impaired wound healing. Isn't it likely they also have impaired wound healing in their arterial vascular tree? And that the damage to the endothelium, which probably is connected with insulin resistance directly, is the beginning event of atherosclerosis. And then LDL gets wrapped into that. And of course, if you have damaged endothelium, if you have a diabetic individual, could higher LDL be worse? Absolutely. Absolutely. Should we try and lower the LDL in that individual who has diabetes and we know has damaged endothelium, which is not healing properly? I would say that's reasonable. But let's also correct the root cause of their diabetes in the first place. You could give them a statin. I think that's reasonably indicated in Western medicine, especially if they're not going to change their diet. But how many cardiologists, how many physicians are really looking hard into the roots of that insulin resistance, the roots of that diabetes, and making the changes, whatever they believe them to be, whether it's a vegan diet, a Mediterranean diet, an animal-based diet, that would start to reverse the root cause of that diabetes. I don't think many physicians are because we are not trained to think that way. And that is a tragedy that I think needs to be changed within our medical system. It's something I wanna be a part of. But I strongly believe that individuals like myself, or perhaps you, if your fasting insulin is low, and this is not medical advice, if your fasting insulin is low, I don't think that LDL is in any way, shape or form causative atherosclerosis. I think it is the fireman that shows up to put out the fire, not the arsonist. And I think there is no good evidence that ApoB directly injures the endothelium. If it did, why is that same amount of ApoB that is circulating in the human body not injuring our veins? Why don't we get atheromas in the veins? On previous podcasts, I've gone much further down this rabbit hole and talked about glycogen storage disease 1A, a condition with elevated levels of LDL with no elevation in rates of atherosclerosis. So if ApoB is causative of atherosclerosis, how can people with glycogen storage disease 1A not have higher rates of atherosclerosis when they have elevated levels of LDL? I've also talked about other conditions which are genetic. There's a monogenic form of insulin resistance known as Dunnigan familial lipodystrophy, where people do not have elevated levels of LDL, but they are insulin resistant and they develop massive atherosclerosis. I've even talked about in previous podcasts, chimp data, which shows that chimps have elevated levels of LDL, much higher than humans in the 200s, but they don't develop atheromas in their arteries the way that humans do but their ApoB looks just like ours. They develop other types of heart disease, which are cardiomyopathy and heart failure, maybe related to captivity in zoos, but they do not develop atheromas in their arteries. Why then do we believe that LDL, that ApoB is causative of atherosclerosis? Is there any solid data really pointing, really indicting LDL and ApoB containing particles as directly injuring the endothelium? I believe there's not. And I believe this is where so many really smart and well-intentioned physicians are being myopic and missing the forest for the trees. This is a super important point. This is the whole point of this podcast.